Um, okay, so guys, Jess is a little bit nervous, and I can only assume it's because you're with a star like me. I actually was just saying, um, that's exactly the reason that I'm nervous. Yeah, you're I get such it. a star. Yeah, I'm actually still starstruck by you every single time I walk into a room that you're in. You know, I just like didn't want to be the one to say it, but you noticed. But then I I ended up being the one to say it. Right. Yeah. You know what? I, I um I really did some deep dive thinking. About okay. Twenty seconds ago. Jess and I both love the Foster Sisters a lot. Who doesn't? Um, also, by the way, you're so lucky to take a train to the city. Oh, my God. Did you not listen to the new episode today because you're reading the book I told you to read? I, yeah, I didn't. Oh I, w- I wasn't listening to anything on the train. I was reading. I, you can't be oh doing two God. things at I'm once like that. I'm telling you to do too many things. I understand. But, like, you really missed out an opportunity. They post podcasts the same days that I do. Don't listen to my list. Actually, no, listen to mine, guys. But and then listen. And then listen to the Fosters. Yeah, and then listen to the Fosters. Um, but yeah, I was listening to it, and I even thought Jess is so lucky that a new um, World's First podcast episode came out today for her train ride into the city. And you, you messed it up. I could just listen to it tomorrow on the train ride back. I mean, I guess it's not the same. It's not the same. But I did have headphones in while I was reading my book, so people wouldn't talk to me. And the man next to me continually was tapping my shoulder and asking me about the book that I was reading. That is so annoying. This morning, I was walking to get breakfast with Danielle. And I was already late, and which is never happens. I am actually never late. It's something about me. I am always on time, and I'm always early. Um, and this guy came and was, like, asking for my number. And he was, like, really sweet. I felt bad. But, like, I had my headphones, and it was, like, so clear that, like, I felt a little bit uncomfortable. And he just, like, wouldn't stop. And I literally had my headphones, and I'm like, this is the point of me wearing headphones. Were so, you, like, like ignoring him completely? Me. No, I, I was like, oh, hi. Like, I was so sure. I wasn't rude because, like, he came up, and, like, that takes confidence. And, like, I, you're going to get rejected. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I felt bad about that. I would totally – it's because you're Texan. I would if No, but he wasn't creepy. So It doesn't matter if they're creepy. Difference. I would – walk by anyone that was talking to me that i didn't want to talk to like it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter if you like really co- i watched you gather the confidence to walk over to me like i would ignore you to i would walk fair, and not make eye contact and keep walking and pretend like i don't see you it was the only time that i've actually paid attention to a guy who's done that okay ever. so like normally i would ignore so it there's but the first for everything. nice it was it was a horrible mistake i guess and, like, sometimes you feel bad up. also like sometimes it's like it's like in the eyes like you could tell yeah like you look at someone and you're like oh i really feel bad yeah that's how and i it was just i don't know too empathetic whatever too perfect and nice you know too um perfect anyways and nice. back to what my you know my thought provoking thought okay that I yeah. had earlier. my I'm thought excited. provoking thought everyone yep that's that's good um i'm getting that tattooed on so me. like clearly i'm sarah and you're aaron but i would like to know <laughs> what who do you think you are and who do you think i am you think you're sarah and i'm aaron yeah because sarah is more self-absorbed sarah okay. likes the line like likes the camera more yeah um, I probably would have said the same thing. Yeah. I identify with Aaron a lot. And I identify with Sarah. There are certain things that I identify with Aaron a lot more. I think there's like two sides to me. It's either like I'm in front of the camera and it's like lights, camera, action, I whatever. Totally. Or I'm like the most chill. I'm actually really low maintenance and easygoing. Yeah, I think, but I think that those, like I think those two things like perfectly coexist in your world and probably in Sarah Foster's world. Like she doesn't seem like a high maintenance yeah. type of person, but she really shines in the spotlight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she can turn it on. I can't turn it on. I need a tequila shot to turn it on. Like, at least one I or two. I was born to turn it on. I was not. Like, I'm in front of the camera. I'm like, oh, yep. I was thinking go. about the other day when we recorded for your vlog, and I had already had one margarita. And you that, did a really good job, by the way. That's because I was one margarita in. Not yeah. too tipsy, not drunk, but, like, a little bit looser. Should we get drinks for dinner? Yeah. Okay, good. And on a rooftop, probably. I, I like the rooftop we went to last night. Okay, yeah. I would say that's a weird idea. Unless there's one closer to the restaurant. Anyways, no one cares about this. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... I just need a little bit of, like, a little bit of liquid courage. This is also what I was talking to my therapist about, because she wants me to start talking to boys um, in public and more. We're going to talk about that today. Yeah. Yeah. And I was saying, like, I could totally do it. I just need one shot of tequila. Like, I don't need to be drunk. I don't need to be anything other than, like, just one shot deep. Okay, hear me out. Do you think that's, like, a little bit of a placebo? Yeah. like, you take one shot, and it doesn't really do much. To but- be fair... I am the world's biggest lightweight. and I could not relate to that at all. I so different. I was just telling my brother this today. Three drinks in and I'm like probably going to have a hangover tomorrow. And I like mean, that's I, just tragic. I get the worst hangovers. Like I would be ba- have, I'm like, bathing in Gatorade. I take two Advil before I go to sleep. I drink a liquid IV poured into my 42 ounce hydro flask and I still wake up hungover. I take Advil the next day. You the need o- to get like actual hangover pills. I have those. Oh my God. That sounds magical. Yeah. But my grandpa told me the last time I was hungover to... um drink a raw egg and i did it did it work um a little it took the edge off for sure and like i mixed like tabasco sauce and worcestershire sauce however you say that and it, that was like the recipe i found online and it it did help a little bit i mean i've heard salt water is good too yeah sometimes you're just like past the point of like returning, returning there's no like way. there's no way you can come back like you feel like you have the spins in the morning when you wake up mm-hmm. and you're like wow i can't i'm not gonna be able to function today i 
hate being hungover more than like and i actually think the the amount that i hate it is not normal like i understand no one likes being hungover of Everyone course it, but i don't think anyone hates it more than i do like i actually think that my life is over and maybe that's just me like only thinking about myself but like i hear my friends like oh yeah i'm hungover like i'm going to get breakfast or something and i'm like i am not getting out of bed i am yeah. so miserable like i can't it also like drastically affects my mood i think it also like you seem like you function so much on like routines and i'm kind yes. of the same way but when I'm hungover, like I can turn that off, and like you I are, can't. I don't think you can. I, like I you really wanna, you want, you wish you could get up at six thirteen and like run to core power, but like you oh physically can't get out of bed. And by the way, when I was eighteen, I used to stay out until like three a.m. and still hit a seven a.m. soul cycle. Yeah, and that well, sounds when like you're I did drugs, and I didn't no. know it was always alcohol. When you're eighteen, the bounce back is so different. It's so different. The things I would do for my eighteen-year-old self metabolism like, physically <laughs> but not even i don't even no, maybe yeah that too but <laughs> mainly just like the hangover portion of it yeah it is horrible it's pretty bad it's really bad so anyways jess and i met actually in bible college <laughs> we're sitting here talking about alcohol i'm really good at transitions here so okay, i thought right. that would like obviously be perfect did you feel like that was a good one i think it was really natural yeah I and it, so i felt that's where the conversation was going anyway yeah obviously i just like seamlessly let us into that perfect um yeah so jess and i met there our college experience uh, it, I nah, I don't know how to explain it. It was. It's going to be a tough one. It was the weirdest college experience I think you could ever possibly have. Um. I, yeah. And I, unless you really, really, really feel like that is what is for you, it's not. It's not something that you just like recommend to someone. You have to feel like that's no, where you need to be. I would never recommend to anyone. I'm not because not because I didn't like it. I just yeah. don't. It's not for everyone. It's not. You have to, you have to be cut from such a... Uh, amen. <laughs> I think you have to be cut from such a specific cloth. Yeah. Like, it has to be, like, ingrained in your DNA to be able to handle that. It and, really does. And before we even get into this, like, we're really sarcastic. We're kidding. I will say, like, the church at large and... Uh, I don't know how to explain this. I think that it was a really great decision for me. And I will be very honest. But I will also say, like, so much of who I am, my life, my foundation, the people around me, I owe to that. Right. Yeah, and I, I would totally agree. And I have like a lot of respect for it, but I do think that there are topics that I don't talk about it out of fear of maybe like offending someone totally. that could really help people because yeah. I wish these were the conversations that I was listening to. Mm-hmm. And I know the people who will be having the conversations and I do have those conversations with them offline. Right. But no one talks about it because it's such a like, you're not allowed to feel a certain way and yeah. you're not allowed to have a certain problem or to work through it. And I think Jess and I are both just kind of working through like similar things I would too. agree yeah and I think if you this isn't also like anyone can relate to this I think outside of even um like a faith perspective I think just how you're your um like the programs that you have growing up things yeah that it's taught. about it's about like beliefs that are instilled in you from a young age like it doesn't have to be faith-based like it could be like almost like superstitions like it literally could be anything like if you come from like a really um cultural family like my family is really Italian so I know there's like elements of that that affect my family mm-hmm. still that have nothing to do with faith but have to do with like familial obligation and all sorts of things like that that have nothing to do with faith but yes. there's like ideas that are ingraining you from a really young age that are really hard to shake and even, even harder to understand yes and I think unlearning is one of the hardest things that I've had to learn how to do same and I think I mean even to the point of you grow up and you have you have a lot of like wrong thinking like even of how you think about yourself right if yeah. you have a lot of like negative self-talk it's a lot of unlearning relearning unlearning yeah. learning my therapist says reframing that's her favorite phrase i know Always let's talk reframing. about what you're reframing right we need to hear we need to hear this about me personally go into it yeah okay so recently i so as some of you may know some of you may not know i'm actually moving to dallas at the end of she'll September, be living in dallas by the time this goes up september 21 baby i'm coming for you um and i have recently decided that i need to start dating and this is something that is almost a little bit embarrassing for me to talk about because i'm 21 like and i've never been on a date i just want to stop you right now like that is not embarrassing and i know that's how you feel so it's fine and valid but But, like i need i also like i need to reframe like it's actually not embarrassing it's actually not embarrassing and it's actually so unbelievably common and like controversial take i actually in the kindest, most respectful way possible, regret every single person that I've dated. I wish that I would... <laughs> <laughs> I wish that I would have been single and at yeah. some point I'm just single, one and done. Every other... every I'm just... I don't actively regret it, but I could have gone without it. Yeah. And I think, like, my therapist... I mean, I love her. She's so great and she's really trying to help me reframe negative thought, like, self-thoughts in general, but mainly about dating. And I think that I, growing up, 
especially like in a house I had two sisters who were really close in age with me who are both really tall like they don't look a lot like me and they but they look very similar and I kind of look like a little bit of a different one so I always in my head made that be like negative like I look worse than them like I'm shorter than them I'm not as pretty as them whatever which is obviously not the reality of a situation like I'm really hot <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know for, Obviously. for yeah. a really long time like that was my perception of yeah. like they're better than me and so like when they were getting boyfriends and we were in public and guys would go up to them like I was like what guys would never come up to me the only men that come up to me are like 35 year old men in the middle of Whole Foods who I'm like I could not want to talk to you less I feel like a 35 year old man no. in the middle of Whole Foods it's not a hot good. guy though no it's like a dad in the middle of Fairfield Connecticut I mean, like get away from me I have a few friends who would be really into that yeah so. I probably that's true but I was like 16 when it was happening okay, so I'm like this fair. is fair okay so that's not it's okay. illegal yeah okay yeah. so that makes sense I take it back so like maybe now at 21 if a 35 year old came out maybe a different story but anyway my whole thought press process at thought process around myself and like the way I viewed myself was really horrible for a really long time and now and I never addressed it I kind of just as I got older and I worked through my comparison issues with my sisters but I did not work on the way that I viewed myself so once I started talking to my therapist about dating I hadn't even realized how many negative perceptions of myself I allowed in and when I was talking about like, oh, I'm nervous to go talk to a boy at a bar because they'll think I'm awkward. And she was like, why? Who thinks you're awkward? Like, who told you that? Yeah. And I'm like, well, no one. But like, it feels awkward. And she's like, you have so many things. So all that to say, I am nervous about, that's one aspect of it that I'm nervous about. And I think that that's probably relatable to a lot of people. You don't want to look like an idiot walking up to someone at a bar. But the reality of a situation is... Um, no one cares. By the way, like I think I'm probably one of the most outgoing people that I know, and I would st- I still feel that way. Yeah, I mean, I did like so. Re- I went out recently. Like I, she made me like go out, and I had to like test myself. I didn't realize this because your therapist told you to go out. Oh yeah, she told I, me, and I was so proud. I did. I was talking to this guy at a bar, and he was really, really, really cute. But I was past the point of like drunk that I would feel comfortable being. Yeah. Um, to like initiate a good conversation so it was just kind of like we were dancing and having fun and like he was really really cute um but then like obviously nothing happened and i don't even remember talking to him i was there was a point where i kept asking my friend what his name was so like i'm not really sure yeah. how productive that was <laughs> no but, i think it was productive though yeah because i was like oh my god this really cute guy wants to talk to me and my sister was there and almost to me i was like wow that makes me feel really good about myself not that, like i love my sister but like This guy walked up to me and wanted to talk to Mm -hmm. me. So I think that there's like slow things like that that I'm slowly trying to unlearn and realize that like I am projecting and also like you attract what you project in a lot of ways. So me feeling like I'm insecure and awkward, like I'm going to attract an insecure and awkward person. And I am not an insecure or awkward person. Yeah, you're not. at all. So that I don't why I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with someone like that. So I'm just trying to like reframe my thoughts. So I attract the right person. And it's actually been really difficult. And But you know what? I'm making small steps. I'm trying my best. You've made a lot of steps. Not even small steps. Yeah. So I feel like, I don't know if that's like relatable to anyone. Like I'm sure it is. I I never, I feel like I never hear people talk about like the weird awkwardness of like never being on a date. Okay. I think, you know what? People don't talk about it enough, but I do hear it talk, like people talking about it. I actually have a lot of friends who have never had a boyfriend or never, whatever. Yeah. Even not like they're later 20s like that's actually really common but people i don't know i feel like you just only think about people who are dating you know what i mean that's probably true also the people that are around me are like dating yeah but like i could have gone without it i think i actually i should have gone without it yeah i mean there's so many aspects of it that i'm really happy that i didn't do but i also think about like and we can talk about this like a little bit as we transition but like i when i moved to la to go to bible college It was a great, in my head, now that I'm looking back on it, it probably was a good time to, like, test out my dating skills, go on casual dates, and, like, have fun. Who would you have dated at this point? No, no, I'm not. Name one person. No, 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 no. Outside of it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was in a whole new city, and I had, like, the opportunity to be, like, I could go, like, on a dating app, which, like, maybe that's, like, they would have frowned upon it in school, but I could have just, like, not to find a boyfriend, just to, like meet strangers yeah Yeah. because it's like so much of dating is like it's trial and error it's learning what you like and what you don't like and i feel like now i'm like oh i had this huge missed opportunity now like i'm obviously not going to harp on it but i had a lot of fear about 
emotional vulnerability and all these things that I didn't really realize until I got there and I was like, I cannot do this. Where did these fears come from? So I could take you back. Um, <laughs> Let's go way, way back. To, I was just about to say the name of my childhood church. That would have been really bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. Again, we love the church. So we I really, we no, genuinely no, no. really do. But any organization of people, it doesn't matter what you are affiliated with, why you're an organization of people is going to be imperfect and there are going to be flaws. Yeah. And the reality is wherever you're at, you have to work through them. Uh, we love the church. Us saying this is in no way, shape or form attacking, demeaning, nothing. But this is the reality. And I do think stories like this need to be told in a way that is healthy and um, not progressive. What's what I'm looking for? Constructive. I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No bashing here. Like, yeah, no, it's not. Like that. This is no hate. Because I no met, hate. I, I met, I met all of my best friends right now. Still, like, are from when I was in youth group. People that I love so much who will like be in yes. my wedding, like, love them to death. But all that to say, when we, were, for me, I've been going to church since I was really, really young, and I grew up like all the way through my church's youth ministry. So like from fifth grade until my senior year of high school you were like a youth group grad i was a youth group grad i was like also a leader for middle schoolers when i was in high school Mm -hmm. like mentoring the youth and you were such a saint look at you mentoring the youth i know i don't know how those kids turned out though so like maybe don't try to track them down but like hopefully we just like we like the thought now and we don't want to like yeah yeah yeah. okay totally but (laughs) we talked a lot about the this is like a word that i feel like people outside of the church don't use that we talked about no purity Oh my God. A lot. Yeah. Purity culture. And when we got to like, actually, I was just thinking about this because I saw someone post it. I saw a TikTok of it. When I was in middle school, I signed a laminated oh my God. card yeah. that said that I wouldn't have sex until I was married. I never signed that, by the way. I signed it. And I last night when I saw the TikTok, found it in my drawer after. I went to go look for it and I have it. I should have brought it here. Oh my God. It's laminated. We like pan to the cameras. With the <laughs> I, should, I wish I had it. I really wish I did. But I yeah. signed a purity card. When I was 13, 14, yeah. middle school. <sighs> and it, it, I don't remember what it said. It was a whole laundry list of things that I would never do. And it, they laminated it for us and had us take it home to remember what we said we were not going to do. Mm-hmm. And then as Emphasis we, on what we are not going to do. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of what was instilled in us as we got older too. All these things that we shouldn't do. Boundaries we had to create emotional boundaries like physical boundaries like talking about sex there was the pondering question of like always how far is too far and then they're like if you're asking that it's too yeah. far like, and i'm like oh, that's not an answer yeah i'm like okay so and then they talked about these ideas of soul ties <laughs> that by the way are quite literally not, not biblical, biblical. The- so they don't exist they are man-made and there is a lie anyways so Um, as I've kind of been processing through all of this, there were so many aspects of what we call purity culture that I had a huge issue with because they weren't biblical that were like, you know, when you have sex with someone before you're married and it was also deeply misogynistic because it was so much more emphasis on when women had sex with men and so much less emphasis when men had sex with women, even though it's literally the same thing because you're both having sex with each other at the same time, quite literally, quite literally at the same time. And there's just, they would be like, listen, we kn- you have to acknowledge that you messed up, but you also have to acknowledge that you're going to be carrying the baggage of this sin for the rest of your life into your future relationships. And when you marry your, because obviously they're talking about women, when you marry your husband, because like obviously it's talking about like the girls and the girls, of course, yeah, of course, um, you're now going to be comparing sex you had with every other person to sex with your husband, and you're going to have to find a way to deal with that. And I would just like to say, I would like to take a poll. People who didn't grow up in church or people who didn't hear that lie, what they think about when they're having sex. Because I'm sure it's not comparison to everyone else that they've slept with. No. And I have a really interesting upbringing because I didn't grow up in a family that went to church all the time. Mm -hmm. I started going myself. I was like 12 years old. I'm Texan. I go to Bible. I go to um, church camp. And I get like radically saved. The next week I'm dating the pastor son and I'm on a mission trip. You know, I'm a very all or nothing kind of person. Literally, that is I what happened. I love That's that for you. Actually what happened. I love the pastor son. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, and yeah, and then I ended up having a really bad, like a really, really bad experience and mm-hmm. I left the church 
hated it was like i hate all this stuff and then i right. end up moving to la for work a year in go back to church and i end up in bible college so, like i leave texas and i go to la and then i end up in bible college my not like my life just doesn't make sense totally. right but i remember i remember having these thoughts of like okay i think so much of it is a lot of shame culture and listen i want anyone to do what they make a decision for themselves if you want to save yourself for marriage that is incredible i want but Go you do should it. do it because you want to do it you should do it because you want to do it yeah. if you don't whatever do whatever you want i don't care you should do that because you want to do it right we all have our own things that we can make we can make those decisions right and i think a lot of it is just unfortunately was just like shame based and i there are again so many churches that teach this in a different way that's not demeaning but unfortunately totally. like that's not a lot of people's stories they didn't mm -hmm. get to grow up in like churches like that or they didn't get lucky enough to be under someone who taught it in a different way right and so then it becomes this really weird like shame-based thing and i'm like i just don't agree like it doesn't have to be like that right and i think a lot of it too like jess and i have been talking about a lot of things that since you know i think going from such an extreme environment like where jess and i were both like very very heavily involved in church totally to then like you're in covid and like you're kind of figuring things out but mm -hmm. also going from speaking for myself but jess is also in this program like for me going from the amount that we were serving and the amount that we were involved to really nothing at all and then after that i realized like oh i actually think that i have picked up some really unhealthy beliefs that i that aren't True. And like habits. And habits that I actually don't believe that are true. I don't think them of other people. But for some reason, I feel like I have to be serving 12 hours on a Sunday. I feel like I have to be all in doing everything that you do. You right. can't do this. You can't do that. Whatever. Or else I am not I am not um, deemed like acceptable yeah. in the place. And I think I think there's part of that that's self-induced. And I think there's part of it of like, no, it's culture. I've, I've, it's culture. I've seen it. Like no. I, I've, I've heard what people say. No, you know? no, it's definitely it's. It's both. It's both. But you believe it because culture tells you to believe it. That's yeah. where the self play. Like you don't make that up in your head. Yeah. Those exactly. ideas are those ideas are planted. Exactly. And again, it's imperfect people who are leading and teaching. Like it's not. I don't want to say it's like not their fault, but like people are gonna mess up. Like they're you're not totally. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm sure anyone that I've led before. I hope to God. No, I haven't been in that position, but I hope to God I could say like, oh, I wouldn't. But like I'm a human being. I'm yeah. going. You're gonna mess things up. You yeah. know. So it's not like a oh these people didn't meet. like i don't that's not one beneficial it's not gonna no. get you anywhere and that's not what we feel like and that's not how i feel but i have had to really take a step back and unlearn to relearn it's like the famous church like deconstruct to reconstruct totally right? gotta rebuild yeah to rebuild of like oh i actually myself have really unhealthy um i don't want to say beliefs because i don't mean like a faith belief but like ideas of what something should be that i actually don't agree with and i think that like oh i'm kind of messed up from this like i want to get healthy and i want to be in a better position and better right. place and i've had to do that for quite some time and i don't think i realized how affected i was yeah. until honestly like a year out of college of being a maybe even more than that like Same. i i didn't realize how much it affected me again though like some of the, it's really it's such a it is the most confusing relationship in my entire life because on one end it is quite literally the best thing that's ever happened to me yeah. and i mean like the church at large and on the other hand like there are times that it's probably one of the worst things yeah. you know and that's just like my reality like my story with it but i don't think it's healthy to sit i don't know i don't want like I'm I'm never gonna be the person that's like oh I hate them they did this blah 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 because no. I don't feel that way. It like, also doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve you. It's You're not, not gonna, gonna heal get you anywhere no. with that mentality. Never. So what have you done um, to kind of re reframe? Reframe. As your therapist says. Yes. So recently, what I've kind of had to talk and like my therapist and I've been talking about this mostly in the um, idea of dating because right now I really feel like I don't even know how. And I think that's my biggest gripe with it is uh, before you get into this. So I do. We did. I think it's important to say the reason that Jess, I don't want to speak for you, but I'm just like, yeah, giving yeah, this yeah, yeah. Say, the reason that Jess expressed yesterday that emotional vulnerability is oh, difficult yeah, for yeah, her. Yeah. OK, do you want to go into that? No. Yeah. So we there is sort of within the boundaries that people created, like and this has to do with purity culture, but just like dating culture in church anyway, within the boundaries that they've created, they don't say there's one way 
to do it, but they basically create all these boundaries so that there's only one way to do it. And, you know, you graduate from high school, you go to a Christian college where there's like uh, ideally less than 3,000 people and it's like a 70-30 split of girls and guys. That's like what how all of them are. They're all like that. And you're ring by spring, like you're going to be engaged probably, if, I mean, sometimes by the end of your junior year and then married at the end of your senior year or you're engaged by the end of your senior year and you know you're going to be married within the next year. So I really thought that was what was going to happen to me. And I went to a regular like Christian university, not the school not that Kenzie and I went that, to, yeah. like a regular university for two months. And I dropped out because I was like, this A is not serving me. And B, this is not what I want to do with my life. You don't like college, living in a dorm, like all that just wasn't for me in general. Like that structure in a huge university or in a small one, I think would have been the same for me. But I think I had this realization where I was like, I don't want to be going down this path. So then I dropped out of school and I was like, I just ruined my whole plan. I had the plan, right? Like it was a setup, right? Like I was going to meet a guy probably at a mixer or at a sports game or through a friend of a friend or whatever it was going to be. And like that was going to be my husband when I was 21, 22 at the latest. Dear God. Yeah. And then I dropped out of school and I was like, oh my, am I allowed to swear on this? Yeah. Holy fuck. I'm not going to, like, this is not what's going to happen anymore. And I had this, like, I think I just kind of put that uh, part of my life almost on pause. Like, I just, I neglected it. I didn't think about it. I didn't nurture it. I didn't do anything to it. And I basically left it covered for however many years now it's been. I'm, I was 18. I'm 21 now, like three, almost three and a half years. And I never addressed it. And now I'm like, I'm 21. I don't know how to date because when we were in church, we talked a lot about how you're not supposed to be emotionally vulnerable with a guy before you're married because you're supposed to save that part of yourself for your husband. Like how dare, like you cannot show that much of yourself to someone that you might not end up marrying. Which in the grand scheme of things, you can't have a healthy relationship (laughs) without sharing parts of yourself. You know, like I... My struggles with mental health. I have really bad anxiety sometimes. Like, I don't know how I could be in a relationship and not say, like, sometimes I need to leave a room because I'm so anxious. Mm -hmm. Like, what am I supposed to do my boyfriend of three years? I'm just going to walk out and they're going to be like, what's wrong with you? Like, what's anxiety? I didn't even know you had that. You a real real meaningful relationship without There's no substance. Like, that's crazy. You know what you are? You're glorified friends. You're glorified friends who sometimes kiss. Yeah. And that's not that's not a relationship. That's not your boyfriend. Level too. Yeah. And you have nothing to talk about. Like you probably like the same sports. It's like your friends. Yeah. And that's not a relationship I want to have leading up to marriage. I don't want to be walking down the aisle not knowing the person I'm going to marry. I want to know their whole entire being. I want to be so unbelievably obsessed with them, so in love with them. And I want to have chosen them. Mm-hmm. And you can't choose to be with somebody if you don't know anything about them. So I had this like realization as I was talking to my therapist about how I literally just don't know how to date. I don't know how to date because in my head, I still feel a little bit like being emotionally vulnerable is wrong and sinful and that attaches shame and it's cyclical, right? You attach, there's shame attached to it and now you're like, you're carrying this weight of like this shame and now I don't want to go out on another date and do this again and have like, where in reality is like, all I did was tell someone like, yeah, sometimes I struggle with anxiety, but I, in my head, that's wrong, that's sinful, and I shouldn't have done that. And I just expose part of myself that I shouldn't have. And that's not the case. That's not what's going to happen to you. Like, there should be absolutely no shame attached with talking about your mental health, A, in general, and B, to a person that you're dating. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But I am trying to navigate, and my therapist is having me reframe. Obviously, like we've said 16 times. What do I want? What do I want to do? And what do I believe? And I've had to honestly, like, I was journaling about it yesterday, and I think that I don't believe a lot of the things that I used to believe. And that was really hard for me to, like, hold to believe, too. True. Yeah. I, I don't think I realized how deep it went, too. Like, when I was journaling yesterday and I was thinking about it, and I was like, this, like, it seeped into so many aspects of my life. And I really, it hurts me almost to not want to believe them anymore. So it's a lot of undoing and taking apart and like putting things under a microscope and being like, who told me to believe this? Was it God or was it man? Mm -hmm. Because if it's God and maybe I need to check myself, right? Like maybe I'm having like a human moment of like a little bit of rebellion or a little bit of something like that. 
then I'll, I will gladly take a check from God, a little kick in the rear. I'll take it. But if it's man and I'm letting myself feel shame and guilt for something that God isn't telling me, like, no thanks. I don't want Not that anymore. That. And I don't need that anymore. So I'm on this journey and I'm really trying to be healthy about it and thoughtful about it. But like, I just like, I need to rip the bandaid off and I need to go on a date. Yeah. Um, and this will be so much fun when we're in Texas. I cannot wait. I mean, I probably won't be dating, but I will be living through you. Do you want to know a secret? Do you already have Hinge in Texas or something? I do already. Ha- I made a Hinge last night in Was bed at, at 1130. Yeah. It's so crazy how smart I am. <laughs> well, I'm, well, we were talking about it yesterday, but when I was putting, first of all, those questions they have on Hinge, like those prompts uh-huh. are horrible. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Like, what am I supposed to write? Like, I love John Mayer music. Do you? I also eat sushi. And I have a dog. I'm vegan sometimes. I'm vegan sometimes, <laughs> except for when they eat fish and eggs. Yeah. That's like the first thing that Jess said to me, by the way. And you know what? I, eventually, at some point in this podcast, we'll talk about our first impressions. Something I really, really relate to everything you're saying in a yeah. different way. I think I, you know, I went back to church. I really, um, again, gained like the foundation, I think, of who I am. There were so many incredible things that were there. I'm like in a relationship. I'm the Texas. I really have this, I think... I don't know if this was taught to me or this is just something that I misinterpreted, but I essentially thought there was only way, one way for my life to go. Yeah. And that if it didn't go that way, then it's wrong and I'm wrong, right? And so uh, when ev- pretty much every single thing within the span of a few months, I kind of lost and I was like, wait a second, like this is what I thought my life was going to be. I'm so confused. And uh, if I was being really, really honest with myself at that point, I could have told you that's not what I wanted my life to be. But I thought that that's what I had to do. Yeah. I thought that's what it had to look like. I thought that's who I had to be with. I thought like, that's just what you're supposed to do. It's tunnel, right? vi- it's tunnel vision. Yes. And I think as well, at the same time, I don't use this word um, lightly, but I think I was definitely in ways like a really spiritually manipulated, right? And so that's a whole other thing that like I'm working through still with a therapist. And right. so there was a lot of things that I think I was just being taken advantage of too. And totally. So, yeah. And so I don't know. I just thought like this is what my life has to look like. So when all that went away and I was just there with myself, I remember my like with my therapist being like, it wasn't that I wasn't, I was completely a whole person on my own. It was more so like I thought that this is what my life had to look like you lost the trajectory yeah and I was like I have no idea and you know what I actually don't want that and I don't want this and this is something I don't want in my life right. and then I've had to learn like it's okay to not want that it's okay to not to not check off all these boxes that you thought you had to because you were told that you had to right and that's not what my life needed to look like and it's so crazy too like just in the grand scheme of things It is so insane that this one life trajectory is kind of like what you were taught you had to do when like, I don't know if you know this, but like God's pretty big. So like Uh, there's yeah a little bit big, you know, a little bit big, created everything in the whole world. Like a little little bit. bit, Yeah. So like if he's like the God of the universe and does everything, that means that there are like infinite possibilities for you. Like there are infinite things, like things that you can never ask of, dream of, think of, imagine, blah, 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 whatever. I'm like going off of Ephesians 320 and putting my own (laughs) suspense, like Kinsey's version. Um, it's it shouldn't be i wouldn't even go as far to say that like it probably shouldn't just be what you think because like god's supposed to be able to do bigger i right? agree so i have had to unlearn what i thought my life needed to look like and i think a lot of people can relate to this in yeah. any way in any topic yeah and be like oh it's okay if i actually do this and i don't want my life to look like that and it is totally fine for me to also have healthy boundaries with the church totally. and healthy boundaries with family and healthy yeah. boundaries like boundaries are not a bad thing but i think in regards to like okay you shouldn't be manipulated into putting boundaries in your life like you shouldn't put boundaries up because someone tells you to you should put boundaries up because you want to yeah i couldn't have said it better myself that was really nice yeah thank you um yeah so i think you know naturally there's just like all these things you have to work through and it's really important and i'm like so pro therapy i mean we talk about our therapist oh my god how many times we brought up i'm so pro therapy like if you don't if you think you don't need therapy you need therapy you need therapy like i promise you if you especially if you think you don't need it yeah yeah i'm just re saying what jess had to say but like seriously no for real yeah if you think you don't need it you do um what did you think about me when you first met me oh what a great question were you like uh, this girl like did you know that i like my i job? knew you had a youtube no because like my best friend was obsessed with your youtube channel oh i forgot about that well also it's um oh i forgot that was our first t- conversation 
Also, at the time, our school is still so small. I think it's only gotten smaller since we left, actually. Yep. So when you search it, <laughs> I pop up, I'm sure, because I yeah. would, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. I definitely watched a video two of years before. Mm-hmm. Um, that wasn't. And you're heard. like, this cool girl is like so cool. Well, my friend. friend used to always be like, which is so ironic now. You remind me so much of this girl on YouTube. And I, this is before like ZLC, like this. Just did you just spill coffee on my sweatshirt? I just spilled coffee on your fear grass I'm literally so sorry. Um, it's fine. I'll get it out. It's fine. Whatever. I'm really, really sorry. It's okay. I'm gonna have to go to my doctor's appointment tomorrow. I'm, I'm really sorry. It's okay. Her. Don't worry. I'll get it out. Um, so my best friend's like, "Oh, you and this girl are so similar." And I watched the video and I was like, "I don't see it." Um, and because I actually don't, I would not think that from my video. I mean, I'm the same in person in real life, but I wouldn't think that we. Well, were Well, I think we're similar in like interests yeah and like undertones values and humor our uh, upfront appearances like probably couldn't be more different yeah which is hysterical Mm -hmm. like yesterday i told jess that our friendship was like so mutually beneficial because she made me take a tiktok (laughs) video like if you've ever seen me do anything like if you know me literally at all she made me like kick my foot up like some tiktok girl (laughs) in the middle of soho like with people walking by and i was so embarrassed she's like please just come do it i'm like walking into the frame and she's like our whole entire friendship is me making you do things that are mutually beneficial and i said no not mutually beneficial beneficial for you no i said i make you do things and and then i was trying to think of something that, and like, i was like i do them yeah that was pretty much it yeah, yeah. anyway so i mean i think it was good for you it's like but, out of your box yeah my, my i didn't even answer your question my first impression of you was you were really very very nice to me when i first got to school did it stop after that or something? No, oh. but we weren't like, we weren't fri- like yeah. friends, but you were very, like when I saw you, you were very, very nice to me. And mm-hmm. um, I just, I don't know, like, I, I thought you were nice. I think. that's. I mean, that's good. Yeah. Like f- very outgoing, very funny. And I knew like, I was like, ah, we could be friends. But mm-hmm. I also like was really shy when I got there. Like I didn't really talk to anyone except for my roommates Yeah, because I was very 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 nervous and really really insecure to be there because a lot of you guys had been there before and there wasn't that many new kids kind of clicky for sure really clicky clicky, yeah which like i mean clicky. and i had only even gotten into that click within weeks of you getting there like i had just become friends with that group of people yeah like good friends right obviously i was at dom but of course it was normally just kind of me and dom off before that i was there two semesters before you was there one semester before dom Mm mm-hmm yeah um I we really did like a one two three me you and dom yeah best things that happened that's that really just kidding impressive. i mean it really depends on who you ask actually yeah these are the best uh, or the worst <laughs> these are the best <laughs> or the worst yeah um yeah so i remember us going to like shake shock and stuff and then it was just over time because you had different friends i had different friends and then over mm-hmm. time we kind of started talking do and you remember um the weekend of bonding when we went away on our school trip Oh, and yeah. And we were listening to Hosanna and we were both like, oh, my, God. Okay. Oh my Lord. Fun fact about Jess and I, we might be like a little bit wild, but we die for early 2000s worship music. I like lead me to the cross. Oh my God. You know who else loves lead me to the cross? Who? Margot Austrie. It's like one of her favorite songs. Wait, it is so I funny. Like, I feel like Margot and I could be friends. You and Margot would really get along. I told her that last night actually. Um, But like lead me to the cross. Yes. Um, Like I used to have that burned on a CD. Like if that makes anyone feel like they want to die, yeah. it makes me feel like I want to die. It actually got stolen from my mom's car when our car got broken into one time. R.I.P. That's fine. I have the song memorized anyway. I don't need the CD. Yeah, I don't even need it. Like trust me. I, just give me a mic. Give me a mic. Give me a mic. Give me a stage. I don't even need a stage. I'll just go on a table. It's oh, fine. I would sing in the car with a mic hooked up to the thing like plug it in yeah so we really bonded we went on to big bear yeah we that to weekend bear. honestly was so fun that really redeemed my entire college experience to be honest with you um like uh, i will say my i will be honest with you the last semester of school pretty much ruined the experience for me so i've actually I, blacked it out of my my memory and i only like to remember my school experience as that spring semester because yeah. that semester my was semester was so, so fun. fun that was the best semester yeah ever it was the greatest Oh my god! But my very last semester was probably the worst time of my life. Mine was mine was pretty bad also because it also got cut off by COVID. But um, I had yeah, a, di- a I had a discre- discrepancy um, with vacation days. Yeah. Oh, I I mean I had a few discrepancies. But I, I don't know if they knew I what I, did, I ended up um oh no I ended up having to drive to and from Orange County like two times 
in a week because my sisters were staying in Orange County and I like couldn't oh, miss wow. school. So I like would drive there after school and then it's like two hours. It's like if and then there's traffic. So like it's actually three and a half hours like yeah. stuck in the car and like yeah, I have to fill up my gas tank once a day. But like it was fine. Yeah, like, we're totally good. Like it was actually not bitter. Jess is not bitter. She's worked through her emotions. No, no. I, it act, That actually just like when I think about it, it thinking it, about like being on the 405 like makes my head hurt. It's actually a really good example though of like how it was kind of like incredibly dumb sometimes. Like just stupid things. Yeah. In my like, opinion. <laughs> I, it's just dumb. It's not an opinion. <laughs> no, it was just dumb. But yeah, other than that, I mean, like, there were so many things that were really fun. Um, I mean, but no, yeah. we had fun. Also, like, us, when we were serving together, like, and it was the two of us, like, hanging up bathroom signs, like, we really fucked shit up. Like, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, we really fucked shit up at church. We FSU, had a lot of fun. fuck shit up. That's my life. That was though. actually the only, like, I mean, I like I liked serving, but, um, no, the best time serving were definitely when we were serving together. Because we're also like... A, we work so well together. Yeah, and we're like a, really, a great duo. Mm -hmm. Like if people wanted us, like we would be sent on task together because we're efficient and we're great. And Jess is good at the things I'm bad at and I'm good at the things Jess is bad at. Yeah, like talking to people in public. <laughs> You're like detail-oriented. I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah. this is a good idea. She's like, screaming at everyone in the store and I'm like, we have a list. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, I can't even think about like places to be and yeah. people to see. And I'm like, oh my god, hey, what's up? Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Um, I also think that we should talk about um books because we obviously have like exquisite taste in books. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal taste. And you know what? I am so glad. I actually just saved Jess from like a really sad, what could have been a really sad time of her life. I'll fill you in, Jess, on what that time okay. was. Um, yeah. So Jess just read, li or Little People, What People We Meet on Vacation. And she told me she loved the book. I really liked it. It was okay. Um, and I said, no, you need to read Beach Read because yeah. it is so much better. And it's one of my favorite books. And the cover and the title make really no don't sense. do it justice and don't make any sense. Exactly. I told you. I'm a Kirk. Well, not at the end. I have like a little bit left. So like I, the t I'm in the place where like the title could still tie in. But like you're saying it doesn't. So it doesn't. Well, it just like feels weird. I feel like the tone, the overall tone of the book is just not, it doesn't match the cover or nor the title yeah because beach reads like would like make you think i was gonna say like signify that it's like a light yes read. and i don't feel like it's a light read at all no but it's, it's like, not crazy heavy no it's no it's light. not heavy but it's like some of the top topics no, of conversation is like a little and grief yeah yeah but it's like i think that the character and the way that he deals with grief like kind of tra that's where they're trying to attribute the lightness to like whatever sim I symbolism agree. all these things crazy um, yeah but i just still think i've always thought that that title was so weird i i don't at this point in my book i do not understand it like period so you're glad though that i made you read this book 100 okay. percent. i'm really glad i was gonna read it anyway but like you saying that it's better than people we meet on vacation and i did just finish people we meet on mm -hmm. vacation is emily henry right mm -hmm. yeah i'm making my mom read people we meet on vacation right now Good. And my grandpa's actually reading Malibu Rising. <laughs> I no, way. On my couch. <laughs> no way. He's such a reader and he, he's been at my house and my grandparents have been at my house like for a couple of weeks and he's been watching TV all day and he's like, I'm bored of TV. I was not at the house. This was yesterday when I was here with you in New York City. And my brother was like, oh, why don't you read a book? Here's one of Jessica's books and handed him Malibu Rising. So like, I don't know what's going down. But, like, I hope Papa likes it. Papa, if you're listening. He's I, definitely not. He doesn't even know what an iPod is. I love that he is reading a Taylor Jenkins Reid novel. He he would actually love The Seven Hus Husbands. Oh, my God. I think anyone in the world would love Seven Husbands. I That is genuinely probably the best book on this planet. Yeah, I mean, what is it? We read that, what, like, almost a year ago? It was my first book. It was, like, January 1st that I read it. And I put off reading it for What like a great day months. January 1st oh, is. Oh, it was such a good day. I couldn't forget it. It might just be my day of birth. I really it's also, like, a restart of the year, but it's actually <laughs> my honest, day To be honest, it wasn't on your birthday. I know that for a fact. But I just <laughs> wanted to tell you that it was. Um, It was just, like, a few days later, maybe. I don't know. I read it in, like, one day. Yeah. And then you texted me, and I was like, okay, I'll read it. It's so good. And I put it off for, like, eight months. It's always the books that are on my to-be-read list that I put off for eight months because I'm like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And then I read them, and I'm like, oh, best book I've ever read. Best book I've ever life. read. That was me with, like, a lot of Colleen Hoover books. Yes. Like, and me reading It Ends With Us, finally, when my sister called me crying, and she's like, you have to read it's it. It's the best book ever. That's, okay, It Ends With Us, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and... No, oh, actually, those are my... Oh, Before We Were Strangers, my top three. Um, have you read Before We Were Strangers? Of course okay, I have. So sure. The last Mrs. Parrish is also on my That's list. That's online for Thriller. Um, it's a fantastic book. Um, I have a deep tie to it because it takes place in the great state of Connecticut. And that's where she's from. It is where I'm from. Although I have no sort of affiliation with like the weird old money aspect of that because um, I... You're not old money. No, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty broke right now, but um, you yeah, know, my trust fund doesn't kick until I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I have no trust fund. Um, just like speaking into existence. 
Maybe we'll like call your dad. We'll pull some strings. Oh my god, I'm gonna call Mike after this. I'm gonna say like, imagine. Please let me know. Imagine if we like found out that we were like gonna get trust funds at some point somehow. At like 24, I found that out. My, Unfortunately, I just like know that's not the case. My friend actually just found out that like when her grandfather passes away, like she's really set. Wow. And I'm like, what? that's really depressing though. Yeah, but they're not that close though, so I don't know okay, if it's like it's not a that depressing. no, but it's like revolutionary like to come like to, to come into all that much money you had no idea and you have are. no idea like you sh- i think there was like an idea but not like you're you're chilling like don't even worry about it wow like i can't say that i'm gonna have that happen when either of my grandparents die but that's okay like s- there's better things in life i'm manifesting my own wealth i don't need anybody else's yeah i like that thanks that's a good thing yeah um i think that we really just have to like pull a, like foster sister kind of situation like I want to own brands and I want to be an investor and I want to just be funny and then go on from there. I think that we could accomplish all those things. Yeah, I really think that we can. As a duo and like yeah. the and like we'll be like separate entities with great things like involved. Like we'll have mm-hmm. our own separate endeavors. Like it'll be really like. But then we come together too. Yeah, like when we're together, it's just like it's it's something that people they're afraid of. Like they it's what they wish they were. Who is like your favorite follow right now? Like who do you follow online? Um, besides obviously me i know that i'm your favorite so you don't have to like okay, okay. like uh, i you took the words right yeah. but like obviously you probably should say me first and then go on from other people god okay is that what you well, said no i no I, I thought you said it's me no but me thank and you god. mrs youth group i don't um, follow god on instagram no i said obviously it's me you can you can if you wanted to say me first oh. and then move on to the oh, okay okay so obviously you okay thank at you. kenzie Lith- was kenzie elizabeth on instagram i don't know if you guys have heard about her she's like really fucking cool she's really fucking cool yeah. um and then i'm really obsessed with um tinks she i love her i love her so much and she's really been helping me reframe also my dating mindset she has such great dating advice like all of these things she could, because she's lived through so much of it she's 30 mm-hmm. she's really on like the other side of like childish men <laughs> because like 20 year olds are where just, i like, want to be they're childish yeah. men yeah. so she has great insight about stuff like that um yeah, she's a great follow. She also, like, her recommendations for products, and she makes great lists. Like, and I am, like, bury me with a list in my hands. Please, like, lower me into the ground with a list between, my like, my hands that are crossed over my mm-hmm. chest. Like, she wants it, like, right by her heart. Yeah, and I want to, okay. like, I don't know what, what the list would say, but probably. Do you want to be buried or going to be cremated? Have you thought about this? I have thought about it, and I would like to be cremated. And I, 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 I don't, know. I, I mean, I want, I want to be cremated and, like, have someone, like, throw my ashes in the water. I don't want anyone to have, like, a physical tied to my earthly body because i think that's i'm sorry if it's like offense anyone i think that's quite nonsense and i think that nonsense, yeah i just like don't want well it's some people's like traditions like i know outside of like a a, a, a belief like that's a like, cultural yeah, yeah, thing, yeah yeah i just mean like i don't want people to feel like they have to like go see me or like go like do this thing like if we had yeah. a great relationship while i was here like i'm like let's just treasure that and like let's remember let's, that like, leave it where it was yeah like let's leave it where it was <laughs> okay. i just don't want to make anyone feel i like i'm the I hate obligation, especially like familial obligation. And I would never want someone to feel like they were doing me a disservice by like not going to visit me or like not doing this ritualistic thing. Like Mm -hmm. I want everyone to know that like I really don't care and I want them to do whatever makes them happy. And if that is going talking to me or like going to whatever, like great. I just want anyone to feel like they need to. So I feel like that that eliminates the idea of obligation. Fair. Um, Also, she's like really into Formula One drivers. Oh, my God. Like if if any of you I guys are, please DM her because like I don't even know what to say back in these conversations. Like I literally don't know them. Did you? Because you laughed at my DM that I sent you yesterday. Laughed at it. I followed all of them. No, 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 no. After I got home and I sent you that really cute picture of one of the guys, and I said I said something really funny, and you laughed out loud. Like you were like, "Haha, this really." Funny. Oh, I don't remember who it was, but oh, I, I know that it was funny. If I said I laughed out loud, I did. I I I'm true to my word. Um, Why am I not remembering what that was? I'll pull it up. Anyways, it was a really. It you was, have like two minutes to talk about Formula One because I need to find this DM. Okay, great. Um, if you haven't watched Drive to Survive on Netflix, it's actually a great show. Um, I was initially brought into it by my brother and my dad. Um. Solely because, like, I'll watch a well-produced documentary or docu-series on literally anything. I'm such a nerd. Like, I don't know if that's even come across while I've been talking, but I am really such a nerd. I love to learn. So if it's well-produced... I just saw the DM and it was funny. It was really funny. Yeah. I will watch it. Anyway, yeah. so now I'm, like, really hooked in. Um, I just have to say, like, I'm a fr- I'm nervous to say out loud the name of the people that I love in case it gets back to them. Like, maybe that's a good thing. And, like, obviously, they are listening right now to this podcast. Should it I? Is, should I? Just go ahead and say it. Because, like, I think this, yeah, obviously. I just listening. need to let everyone know. Yeah. I've yeah. been at, like, 50 of this podcast, too. Yeah. Um, Daniel Ricardo. Okay. If you're listening to this, like, let me know when you're in Los Angeles. Jess will, like, risk it all. I would 
probably put my life on the line yeah. to run into you. Also, um, yeah, I was going to say something else, but I don't want to jinx it. Okay. Um, but like, just Would you like, consider yourself superstitious yourself? Or is it- my mom is really superstitious. She like knocks on wood all the time. Yeah. So I think that I don't really believe it. But she, if I said this out loud, what I was just about to say, she would say, don't say that. You're going to jinx it. So no, that's just, that's I heard her voice process, in my head. Yeah. Um, I was going to say basically like, there's an occasion where I probably could run into him. And, like, if he sees me, he should come talk oh, to like, me. Oh, like, we're working on pulling some strings, like, as we speak. Like, we have texted out to my manager, audio yeah, messages. I mean, so I, like, I said something to a mutual friend that we, or to a friend that I said could maybe help, you know. I'm doing things for you. Yeah. I'm really selfless. Thank you very much, actually. No, I, listen, we're making moves. Mutually beneficial friendship. A mutually, finally, yeah. here we go. Mutually beneficial friendship. If yeah. I end up, and play this recording at our wedding, for real, if I end up marrying Daniel Ricardo, you, you'll be the only one to thank. The entire wedding, I will make it about me. Because I did that. I'm probably going to get married in like the south of France if I marry him. That's going to be such a fun wedding to make about me. I'm, I'll do it anywhere. In south of France, it's a chainsaw. No, I know. It'll, it'll, I think it'll amplify it. <laughs> yeah, if anything, the glamour, really gonna be on one. the glamour would be like off wow. the freaking chains. Okay, well, unfortunately, like, we do have to end this podcast at some point. But I do want to talk about um, one more thing. Okay. What do you think? I want to answer this for each other. Okay. What do you think is the best thing that has happened to me in the past year? And what do you think is the best thing that has happened? You can be honest because I know what you're going to say. Okay. Go, go ahead. Um, being single? <laughs> the breakup? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, be, like, yeah, being broken. Be, not broken up with. Like, but, yeah. Okay. Having the breakup happen. Yeah. I would say I think that – hold on. I have to cough. <laughs> um, that – I think you, I don't, I don't, I mean this in the least like disrespectful way. Like I think you became a lot more of yourself again. Like when you Oh, I broke fully up found myself again. But I also would want to say, I don't, that was fully the relationship. I think that was school. Like I really do oh, think that was college. I, I think it, yeah. And I think I was actually talking to a friend last night. I think not to be really super morbid or whatever. I think it was my brother died mm-hmm. to being in college, to having so many things, yeah. to having that relationship. It wasn't until I was out of college, I was back in Texas we had broken up that I found myself again. And I don't think I realized how much of myself I had lost through both the program that I was in and the relationship that I was in. And your grief. And the grief, yeah. Grief really does it to you. Yeah, and like that's normal, so. Yeah, totally But I would agree, and it's nothing personal. No, I don't think it's, I I think it's so much much of like who you become in a relationship, but I don't think it has anything to do with the other person. Yeah. Or not that much to do with the other person. (laughs) Yeah, and I am so much happier now. I And I think I would never have been able this is just like encouraging for anyone who's like going through a breakup and feels like heartbroken or whatever um i think there will uh, people i think are so focused on them when you go through a breakup they're like maybe it'll come back around maybe no. whatever kind of the goal of a breakup honestly is that you end up growing so much that you don't even want it to come back around yeah you don't want to like there is no yeah. ounce of also, me that also would do that from an outside perspective of like being the best friend of someone in the situation i think it's really important to encourage your friends in the pos- in a positive direction it's really easy to validate someone's feelings and if they're like i should text him i should call him and you're like i love you so much but like n- no fun intended um <laughs> for the record though i never said that i should text or call him no I no was no over it i was done no no yeah. you didn't i'm just saying like I- if you're leading that way like you were saying like it's easy to fall like back and i think that if your friend is like it, even if you kind of sound like a bitch like you should nudge them in the right direction because i think they would thank you later and mm-hmm. especially if you've seen positive like if you know it's the best thing you should say to your friend, like, listen. This is good for you. You're a better person because of this. Yeah. And I can visibly see that. Yeah. And I think every single person could visibly see that. Yeah. You know, it's good. And both of us, I'm sure. I mean, I don't know anything about him, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I would hope that. I'm interested to think, to hear what you think the best thing that happened to me this I think year. for you, it was going to therapy because I think you have grown so much. Like, I think about the Jess that I met day one to you now. And granted, I mean, like, you're in a new school and like, you're nervous and whatever, but mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I just think you've you've like come out of your shell so much more. I was so insecure. Your, you've just come into your own. Like you really, you're so independent, and you are really just like sounds stupid, but like your own person. Yeah. I don't know. I just think you've grown so much because of therapy. I really appreciate that. So go to therapy. I'll go, tell my I'll tell my therapist you said that. You're well. Oh, God, tell her I said. I'll text her actually that, yeah. right after this. Um. Yeah. So go through breakups. Go to therapy, and um. Maybe. T- you know. Maybe. Decide where you think college would be good for you. Don't yeah. go to a four-year university because you think you should. Yeah, don't go anywhere because you think that you should. You also should try to sleep. I wish I had slept in a dorm room for one night before I went. I never would have gone to college. I swear to God. Those beds are freaking horrible. Just would never it doesn't matter the mattress topper you put on it. I bought a really expensive, really thick mattress topper and it didn't fix it. So like and Justin you have no I kitchen. Are, 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 we do differ in some ways. I can sleep anywhere. I literally can sleep on like a train. 
I can't sleep in public places. I don't like people watch me sleep. I mean, that's like a fair thing, I guess. But I just, I don't, I'm like, who wants? I to? don't care enough about things. Like, I really should care more. Even I care, now, about, th- I care I, about stupid shit sometimes, though. No, I should care about things. Like, I could have potentially lost my iPad. I didn't. I was like, oh, whatever. I'll figure I know, it and out. I told like, you to call Blue Bottle, and you hung and up. And you know what? They didn't answer immediately, and I got annoyed, so I hung up. And like, all we know, for all we know, the I iPad. Hope to God, it's at my hotel. If not, I it mean, is. It's going to be a hefty check that I have to. A check. I've never written. Actually, I have. I've never written a check for myself. <sighs> yeah, I mean, no I don't even have checks. I don't. I don't have a checkbook. Who do people really use checks like for real? Stuff? I haven't. I don't know the last time I've seen someone use a check. I've had to for random things like apartments and stuff like that, mm. like a cashier's check. I don't have any money, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you. Really it's hard to write a check without money. With money. money, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Well, anyways, this was a great episode. Um, I had so much fun. I, had I was really time. nervous. Oh yeah, obviously because I'm a star. So it's okay. I'm glad we like, one full day, circled. One day you will. You'll just get used to like me. You know. Yeah. I mean, like, Being I don't in know your how presence, much longer you it's need. It's really overwhelming. Yeah, I get that. I'm still starstruck. Mm, that's okay. Well, you'll get there. Thanks. Anyways, uh, thank you for coming. Where can they find you? Um, oh, do you want people to follow you on Instagram? Should sh- I like, not tag you? No, or, you could. No, okay. no, no. People could follow me. I mean, I was thinking the other day, I'm like, I should, like, my guy friends, I'm like, I should ask if they want me to, because they're all private. That's kind of rude if I talk Oh, them. my Instagram's public. Like, I have okay. no, um, I have no issue. Um, you can follow me at Jessica O'Hara, but Jessica with three S's on Instagram. That's, like, basically the only social media I have. You can also follow mine and Kenzie's company, The Okind, on Instagram if you <laughs> oh, want yeah, to. Please do that, guys. Um, but yeah, that's it. I don't have any other social media. Like, don't find me on Twitter. I think the only thing that I post Do you want to say like, yeehaw since you're moving to Texas? Um... Yeehaw. Oh my god, I thought you were gonna say no for sure. That's a great ending. All right, well, thanks for listening to the podcast, guys. Yeehaw. Bye. <laughs>